In order to work further problems concerning present value, we need to know how to we need to know we need to figure out a formula for summarizing the following kind of uh, arithmetic expression, algebraic expression that I have at the top of the screen. S suppose we have a set of IOUs promising to pay you a dollar immediately, a dollar next year, a dollar a year from that, a dollar a year from that dot 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 all the way to a dollar in years from now and then it stops. The present value of that stream of IOUs would be what I've written at the top of the screen. I call it S. Where S stands for sum. It'd be 1 plus 1 over 1 plus r plus 1 over 1 plus r squared plus 1 over 1 plus r cubed plus 1 over 1 plus r to the fourth plus dot 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 1 over 1 plus r to the n. If you're familiar with summation notation, it can be written as I've written it on the right, the sum as i goes from 0 to n of 1 over 1 plus r to the i. And this kind of expression occurs fairly often when you're working with, when you're working problems of present value. So we need to know how to, uh, how to handle it. Now, it, it is, if, if n is known and r is known, then it is possible just to calculate all these terms by brute force and then add them all up. But there are quicker ways of doing it. And these other ways are also extremely useful if r and n are unknown variables instead of being constants. The way to simplify s is to use what mathematicians call a trick. That is something which is not, it, it's not clear why it works, but it turns out to work. And what you do is you multiply the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation by 1 over 1 plus r. From this point on, I'm going to be ignoring ignoring the summation expression over there, because some of you might be unfamiliar with it. So the equation I'm talking about is the, the first equal to sign. So multiply both the left-hand side and the right-hand side by 1 over 1 plus r. So on the left, we have 1 over 1 plus r times s. And on the right, we have 1 over 1 plus r times each one of the terms. And I'm going to use the distributive law to, to distribute this um, among, among uh, each one of the terms, by which I mean if you have, let's say, a times b plus c plus d plus e, you know that's equal to ab plus ac plus ad plus ae. So the a plays the role of 1 over 1 plus r, and I'm going to multiply it by each term. The first term on the right-hand side is 1, so when that gets multiplied by 1 over 1 plus r, it just becomes 1 over 1 plus r. The second term is 1 over 1 plus r, so if you multiply that by 1 over 1 plus r, you get 1 over 1 plus r squared. Third term, because 1 over 1 plus r cubed, the fourth term, 1 over 1 plus r to the fourth, the fifth one, 1 over 1 plus r to the fifth, and the last one becomes 1 over 1 plus r to the n plus 1. Let's, we, what I'm going to do now is actually uh, uh, move these over on the screen just so that they line up with these with the corresponding term above it. You'll see what I mean in, in just a second. So here I've literally moved each one of the terms over. Now I want to subtract the second equation from the first. In other words, I want to take this minus this. And the structure is the following. If you have a equals b and c equals d, then a minus c equals b minus d. So that's what I'm going to do. On the left-hand side, I get the top expression 
s minus the bottom expression, 1 over 1 plus r times s. And look what I get on the right hand side. I get 1, and then I have plus 1 over 1 plus r minus 1 over 1 plus r. Okay, the second one is minus because I'm subtracting the second equation, so those cancel. Similarly, these two are going to cancel, these two are going to cancel, these two are going to cancel. So you get a whole bunch of cancellations. What you end up with is 1 and then minus 1 plus r to the n plus 1 because that doesn't have anything to cancel uh, it. But everything else gets, everything else has something to cancel. This, this, this with this, those two, those two, and so forth. On the left hand side, let's get a common denominator. 1 plus r over 1 plus r minus 1 over 1 plus r. And on the right hand side, we can't simplify at this point. And on the left hand side, we have a common denominator. So let's, let's pull out um, s. And we have 1 plus r divided by 1 plus r minus 1 over 1 plus r. Again, the right hand side stays the same. 1 over 1 plus r to the n plus 1. The left hand side, I can simplify what's in parentheses. And the new, I have the same denominators. And in the numerator, I have 1 plus r minus 1. This is going to be equal to r. So I have s times r over 1 plus r equals to 1 over 1 plus r to the n plus 1. So solving for s, mi multiply both sides by 1 plus r over r. That's the expression. So s is equal to a 1 plus r over r times, open bracket, 1 minus 1 over 1 plus r to the n plus 1. It's also interesting to consider what is the limit of s as n goes to infinity. This would be the present value of uh, an infinite stream of IOUs promising to pay you a one dollar every year. Now as n goes to infinity, well, let's write it down, limit, as n goes to infinity, one plus, so this is s, one plus r over r times one minus one over one plus r to the n plus 1. So as n goes to infinity, 1 plus r to the n plus 1 goes to infinity. And therefore this approaches 1 over infinity, which is 0. And therefore, in the limit, this term drops out. And all you got left inside the brackets is the number 1. And outside the brackets, you have 1 over 1 plus r. And if you multiply 1 times 1 over 1 plus r, you just get 1 over 1 plus r. Okay, this can be rewritten 1 over r plus r over r. In other words, it can be written 1 plus 1 over r. So that's the present value. for income streams 1, 1, 1, and so forth, where the first stream starts now. It's also interesting to think about the present value of the this, this stream where you get the first payment a year from now. In other words, let's go back to the top. What I now want to consider 
is is the following alternative. Uh, I'm thinking about what is, let's call it s prime equals 1 over 1 plus r plus 1 over 1 plus r squared plus 1 over 1 plus r cubed plus 1 over 1 plus r to the fourth plus forever. And the difference between s prime s, well there are two differences. One is that s prime goes forever. The second difference is that s has an initial payment in the first year. That has an initial payment immediately that has a value of 1. The, the present value of s prime is going to be the present value of s. Well, it's going to be the present value of the limit of s as n goes to infinity minus 1. Because that's a, the difference between s prime and s is just that 1 in the first term, 1 in the first year. I already know what the present value of s is as n goes to infinity. That's 1 over 1 plus r. So if I subtract 1 from it, I get 1 over r. And this expression is actually really famous. It's called the value of a perpetuity. A perpetuity is a bond promising to pay you one dollar next year, one dollar the year after that, and then one dollar forever starting next year. Now in the United States it's not legal for firms or the government to issue perpetuities, but in Britain it is, and the British government issued its first perpetuity I believe before the 19th century. And those bonds keep on paying interest forever unless the issuer, in this case the government of the UK, were to purchase the bond for, um, purchase the bond from whoever holds it, and then of course it, it, it doesn't make sense to pay interest to yourself, so you, the bond would be retired. So the value of a stream of one dollar a year forever is one divided by one plus the interest rate. And that can be a a useful thing to know.